Okay guys, trust me, I get it. Like me, you've probably scoured the internet trying to find the answer to a question that you thought was easy. That question, what in the hell is the actual difference between a Jackson Dinky and a Jackson Soloist? You probably found a lot of information about it on the internet. The only bummer was everything is freaking conflicting. So in this video, I'm gonna break down the real differences between a Jackson Dinky and a Jackson Soloist. And yes, I am gonna talk about their body sizes. This is the ax, let's go. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Nick. I'm a guitarist here on YouTube and I'm frustrated. I've been searching on Google, YouTube, and the Jackson website and I found so much conflicting information regarding the differences between the Jackson Dinky and the Soloist. So I put together this ultimate guide just for you. So in this video, we're gonna talk about a few things. One, body construction. Two, neck differences. And three, you know it, body sizes. Now just a disclaimer up front, there are some nuances when it comes to the different lines that Jackson produces. This includes the JS series, the X series, and all the way up to the USA series. That's why we're not going to cover electronics and hardware because they vary so differently based on the line and the model. And another thing is that in this video, I'm referring to Jackson Dinkies and Soloists that are currently being made. There's a lot of variation when we start to include older models and that's a whole nother video. Now before we start, if you enjoy the content, please subscribe below. That will help me grow the channel and get to our goals, which are listed in the description. Go check them out. Okay, first thing we're gonna look at is construction. Both the Dinky and the Soloist are considered Super Strat guitars with double cutaways. The Soloist has been around since the early 80s when Super Strat style guitars became super popular because of none other than Eddie Van Halen. Jackson Dinkies would appear a little bit later around 1986. Now, under the paint is where these guitars really differ. Jackson Soloists are strictly neck through style designs, meaning that the wood that comprises the guitar's neck also makes up the center slab of the body. Wooden wings are then added to the sides of this slab to make the rest of the guitar body. This design in theory improves tone, sustain, because the pickups, bridge, saddles, all of that is located on the same piece of wood as the neck. Now the Dinky gives a big middle finger to the Soloist design. The Dinkies have bolt-on neck construction, meaning that there's no shared wood between the neck and the guitar body. This type of construction tends to keep costs down and it's cheaper to manufacture and some people just straight up like it. You can replace the neck if needed and it's easier to adjust. And some players actually like the more bright twangy tone that you can get with a bolt-on neck. Now let's move on to actual neck differences. It's been firmly established that while they're similar, the necks between the Dinky and the Soloist do differ quite a bit. Now they both almost always have a 25.5 scale, have a 12 to 16 compound radius, and have an overall neck profile that is advantageous to like shredders and metal players. But the Soloist is gonna have the more robust and thicker neck of the two. It's been described as a beefier D shape, and the back of the necks tend to have a type of finish on them. Being that they're like a neck through design, the body finish is usually consistent with the back of the neck. This can be a point of contention for some, stating that the finished neck can be sticky and requires more frequent cleaning. Lastly, the new soloists tend to have a type of fretboard binding. This is super attractive and it's clinically proven to make you look rich in front of your Bitcoin trader buddies. Now the Dinky really was designed with the shredder in mind. For starters, all the research I've done has shown that these necks are almost always thinner and faster. Due to the bolt-on construction, they tend not to have a finish on the back of the neck, making it a favorable design for some shredders. Another plus of no finish on the back of the neck is that sometimes it can reveal the multi-wood construction if the guitar has it. Now generally, Dinkies don't have fretboard binding unless it's like a Pro or a Signature Series. Lastly, now this isn't guaranteed, but more Dinkies have the reversed headstock compared to uh, the Soloist. Now on to body size. Now this is a point of contention for uh, some of you nerds out there on guitar forums. Are the bodies of a Jackson Dinky and a Jackson Soloist actually different? The right answer? It's complicated. Many posit that the Dinky get its name because it's a dinkier version of the Soloist. They claim that the Dinky is 7 eighths smaller than its sister guitar. History and an internet sized game of telephone has led to some misinformation around this. Yes, Dinkies were smaller than Soloists when they were made with 22 frets back in the late 80s and early 90s. That much is certain. Now there are very subtle differences, if any, between the Dinky and Soloist body size today. 
I can say with a 99% confidence interval that these two guitars share the same body size and shape. Now some owners out there have reported that the Dinky does feel a little bit slimmer or thinner than the Soloist. With that said, there is literally nothing that I found that can support the concrete claim that the Soloist and the Dinkies are different in body size or shape. So then why does everybody say the Dinky is 7 8 smaller than the Soloist? So a long time ago, the Dinky and the Soloist did indeed list this size comparison on their specs. But it was in reference to their size in relation to a standard Fender Stratocaster body. So over time, and with the notion of thinking the Dinky was actually smaller, people started to attribute the 7 8 size difference to the Dinky. And because of them, we're here today still trying to figure the out. As of now, the Soloist and the Dinkies are 7 8 smaller than a standard Stratocaster. All right, so we did it. That is the end of this video, but I'd like you to keep something in mind. These two models can differ so much in their specifications, and there, of course, are gonna be exceptions and differences throughout the course of history, especially as you traverse through the different lines and levels of quality. Thank you all for coming and hanging out with me. If you liked the content, please hit the subscribe button below. Other than that, see you later.